Uh, why was uh, Conway recalled from his loan in Phoenix? Well, he, he wasn't playing that much and, you know, it was ended. Probably Carlos has more details on that, but uh, all I know is he, he is going to be back. Um, and uh, we're, you know, seeing second team is better for him and that. So, yeah, we're in that process still. And someone to my left has reported that uh, Mosquera is coming back from okay. Defensa. Um, I'm curious if that is accurate and why. Yeah, I think they're in the process of that. I don't have too much information. Probably Carlos, again, has more info about that. I'm completely focused on DC. I heard the, the news and all that, but I, I still don't know where we are on that and, you know, legally, what are the details of that situation. So I, I cannot make more comments on that. Uh, what happened with Sosa's ankle that caused him to be out for LAFC and not training today? Yes, uh, so in Colorado, uh, he jumped in one play and he landed awkwardly in, uh, with his left ankle. And then, um, since there, he's been not great, lingering, troubled, and uh, with some pain. So now, you know, he, he, he made us aware of his discomfort on the ankle. So now he, he's, he's out because of that and he's dealing with that situation at the moment. When you. Uh reviewed the LAFC film, what needs to be better with the team going forward trying to score against DC United? Well, again, I think it comes to the build-up a little bit. Uh, I think the first half and the first probably 20-30 minutes, um, we did a couple good plays in terms of breaking them down, the chance from Andrew Goodman that passes to, to mm -hmm. Thiago, then another one that he dribbled past uh, Hollingshead, and then he tried to cut back, he was a corner. I think Derek Etienne had another one that could have crossed to Jaco as well. A couple, couple good actions where we disrupt them from, from back to front. Uh, but I think after that, a couple individual errors in the build-up, passing choices or quality of the pass and then we couldn't uh, break that line. I don't think actually it was because of the type of pressure we were receiving. We, we knew exactly what what was the plan and where were the spaces. I think the players understood. They tried those but we just missed those passes and then every time you lose the ball against LAFC they have transition moments very very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So we, we knew that that we need to be careful with that. So uh, we couldn't connect those passes, and then from there they start to gain some momentum. And especially in the second half, after Vela um, entered the game, I think they were very, very much in our half. And then when they missed the penalty, I think that then we came back a little bit to have a little bit of possession, and then a couple of chances with Caleb on the left, and then another one, maybe Tyler should have shoot and goal, and you know all, all those little details that that maybe you know we can, could have gotten more than, than one point. With Caleb being back, um, do you see him playing as a winger, especially with Arhujo maybe going out the door, at the end sliding over to the right, and Wiley, Wiley playing on the left? Yeah, we will see. We're in that process. Uh, we will see. I think he, he can play on both easily. You, you've seen that we've been using him mostly as a winger. That is still is a massive possibility for us because I think the kid has a very good decision making in the final third, very good final product with his crosses and his ability to get in behind fullbacks is very, very good. Um, and he proved that he can also score goals, uh, give assists. So, so I think he's a, a very good option on the left, but he can do the same by surprise as a fullback. So is that uh, option that we have and be flexible with him? So I don't want to put him in a box. He's only one of those two. Uh, because I think he understands he can do both at the same level. And Arhujo is still you're going to look at it game by game as to whether he's going to continue playing or if you're going to phase in someone else to get them ready. Yes, probably game by game, you know. And we'll see after this one. We have a little bit of break, and we'll see after after this one what we decided. But, but yeah, he's going to be probably tomorrow still available. Is Ozzy going to play uh, tomorrow? Well, he's going to be available. He'll be available. He's, he will be available. Uh, very likely, he will be on the bench. So from there, we will see how the game goes. But uh, it's funny that uh, he got injured against DC, and he might be back against DC as well. So it's uh, uh, it's probably a circle, close a close circle there. But uh, yeah, anyways, it depends on the game and the type of game. We know what he can provide in certain moments of the game. So if uh, everything is going well, probably he, he he's going to play. I wanted to ask about Andrew's positioning. Uh, it seemed last year that he was kind of tucking in, overlapping, and kind of being a second striker. And 
at times. Um, it, that has changed this year, and we kind of talked about it with him just a moment ago. Um, why kind of the choice to maybe restrict that movement in particular? So I, don't, I, I didn't understand. Last year, he was doing more that on the lap. under lap, and sometimes he would be paired next to the striker. Last year. Yes. And now this year, he hasn't done not that. Much. Yeah, not as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a little bit of uh, the decision on not being so exposed in transition. Mm -hmm. So he still has the freedom to go in certain moments, but we talk about uh, doing when it counts and not being exposed, especially because normally Brooks is pretty high. Um, and then if he goes, at times we're very exposed, so against certain opponents, LAFC, for example, you leave Opoku, Buanga, Bella, or whoever, whoever else, uh, up front and then against two center backs is very difficult. So it's becoming a bit of an adjustment there. That doesn't mean he cannot overlap or underlap. He still can do that. If you remember the goal against Chicago, Jakumaki's first goal, it was across from Ronald and then he was in the far post. So still for sure he can end up being in the attacking half and even underlapping. But I want to be a bit more cautious in certain moments and have him just from back to front, never pass the line of the ball, little things like that. And then at the right moment, of course, he can go. So it's just a little adjustment. It's, it's not a massive, massive uh, demands because he's good in the final third. We know he can score goals. So it's just being a bit more protected. Was Mateus finding the proper spaces in build up in Stolarcy? It uh, probably. He, he was going in, the, in in those spaces, probably at times we were not finding him. Okay. In certain other moments, probably he wasn't progressing the ball there, but some others he did. I mean, there are a couple of good action. I remember one in the first half that Brooks passes to him and then he plays back to Brooks underlapping and from there we progress the ball to the left. So there were a couple of good actions in there. Um, and we were playing also like at times in the pocket, at times dropping as a second pivot for Ivara to trying to attract more and then maybe create more space for Thiago and beneath Yaku. So we're working, especially in the second half, on certain ideas there. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, when you're not able to progress the, the ball from the defenders to the middle, the, the midfielders, and from there to the attackers, like it's, it's really difficult for anyone to find pockets. And after that, it's a bit of, uh, you know, lack of confidence with so many transition moments. So we couldn't manage that in a good way. But there are also many positives out of the last game. I mean, the resilience and, and yes, we were probably not super sharp on the ball, but then off the ball, everybody was running. Everybody was life or dead inside the box. Everybody was uh, sprinting outside to block crosses, all that. So some of the chances that we considered were a little bit in transition. And then when they were overwhelming us with a lot of numbers, I mean, Brad was massive massively important in the result, but also the center backs caught a lot of crosses, caught a lot of shots. So I think that overall the, the mentality of the team was strong. They showed a lot of character in a very difficult place mm -hmm. to play against the champions. So it's not easy to play there. And when you cannot win, you don't lose. And that's the resilience that I want from my team. We couldn't play the best game, we know, mm -hmm. but uh, not losing in those moments is important. You know, at the end of the season, when you do the math and that, some of these points that you catch up at, out of not a great performance are very important. So we need more of those when, when we cannot win, we don't lose. And then obviously looking forward always to play better and try to dominate more in the games away, especially. With Kayla back and Louise leaving soon, um, the last time Louise is out, uh, y'all had Etienne on the right and Caleb on the left. Uh, looking back at that particular game, how did you feel about the balance of the team in the yeah. final third? Yes, that's obviously a possibility that we know with Derek he has. Mm -hmm. Of course, when we brought Derek, we were looking more on, on the left right. because, you know, when his best year with Columbus was playing on the left, uh, was his best productive uh, year. Uh, but also, you know, we have to take in consideration, you know, we have Yaku, and Yaku probably changes a little bit the way we attack. So at times, you know, having a natural foot instead of inverted wingers, so if we have a natural foot, maybe we can put more crosses for Yaku. You know, in the past, we tried to avoid a little bit super, uh, I don't know, high crosses. Uh, but now we have a big body there. We have a guy that is dominant in the air that can get uh, in the front of the defenders and get something in the air. So at times, of course, we still want to attack the primacy zones, but if the teams are apparently are defending well, those against us, can we now have a more directness? And maybe that's just playing outside. He 
just, just swings the ball inside with his natural foot. The same with Caleb, with Andrew on the left, Brooks and Derek on the right, and on their lap, overlap to get a more natural crosses. It's another possibility for sure. So he's there, we've been exploring that, but we wanted to move too quickly out from, from Luis, because I think also his ability to carry on with the ball and be dangerous with his dribbling inside and playing through ball to Yaku. I think there are many different ways you can attack in that area, but realizing that Yaku needs services. So so at times, can we be a bit more exploring those early crosses or cross inverted crosses, but with a natural foot mm -hmm. can be something we can we can try with Derek on the right, for sure. In that same Miami game, it seemed like the attacking structure ended up as a 2-3-5 with the fullbacks. Getting forward, is that kind of the, the ideal shape you'd like in the final third? Yeah, kind of. Uh, it depends on the opponent and, and the shapes and everything, again, it starts with the build-up. If you want to play direct, then it doesn't matter too much. You just put the ball front and you pray, Lord, to, to catch the second ball and, and that's it, right? There's more unpredictability on how you're going to attack. You never know where the ball is going to bounce in those. Mm -hmm. But if you want to play out the back and attract them and then disrupt them and the philosophy that we have on, on why we play out from the back, you really need to look at the structures based on how you're being pressed. So at times build up with three against two, at times build up with two, at times build up with two against two is also good if you can find the six in behind. So there are different ways and depends also the personnel you have. So that's the, the thing that you, you have to take a look at is what type of players we have in certain positions. We have a full roster to pick really the right options for that specific opponent. Um, and at times also don't change too much who we are and how we build. So it's a balance there on not changing too much the structure, but trying to have some thought on how we can disrupt the opponent better with different tweaks, right? Um, that game in particular is not a true reflection on how I'm thinking Derek can play on the right side. Okay. That game in particular, he was a lot in the pocket. The demand, he was more in the pocket, and I don't think uh, is the, the main attribute of Derek. Derek is more out wide, making runs in behind, 1v1 dribbling, ending in the far post when the opposite the, the cross comes on the opposite side so i don't think that game against miami when he played on the right is a true reflection of how he can do on the right side so i think uh, if in the future we use him on the right it's going to be more out wide and trying to yes still he can come in the pocket to allow brooks to overlap mm -hmm. it's going to be more by surprise a counter movement he's checking and then the timing of brooks overlapping but not him staying the whole time in the pocket as as it was a little bit against miami yeah. What are the challenges in a week like this where you have short rest and you're playing two very different kinds of opponents? Many, many ch challenges. The, the long trip, you know, uh, yesterday was a long, long day for us. Um, but, I mean, players are fantastic. They come with a great attitude to do the region. It's not easy to arrive here around 6, 7 and, and do the region after a long day. But this is high-performance team, and we need to, to do that, to be physically very good. I have no worries about the fitness levels of the team. We're very good on that. Um, so we're going to recover well. It's more, you know, the sleeping time and, and the f physical fatigue. And today we will assess all the players after now the training. And then we'll see if we do a couple rotations or we don't need at all. And we go again uh, with the same lineup. We have to assess a few. and. Uh, but those are the challenges. Then, of course, we know exactly how DC plays. Uh, we watched the film today on them, and, and we know exactly what's the game plan already. So I think the, the team is going to be ready. What's the plan for next week with the team being off? We're going to have a few days off, probably more than a few, so four or five days off. Um, and then we're going to come back for New York City. Of course, there are certain things there with you know Nations League and and some guys going to, to the Gold Cup and all that. So it's going to be a little bit of, you know, uh, a lot of moving parts in, in that week. But we just want to finish strong at home against DC. And then we can have some mental rest because mm -hmm. it feels like since January, the preseason and that now we're in June and playing a lot of games. Everybody, not just the players, but the staff, everyone in the building needs a little bit of a, of a mental break to come back stronger. And then before Nations League, we have a few more games and then we reboot after uh, hopefully being very competitive in in in, in uh, League Cup. I'm sorry, and then uh, and then we can we can have a second half of the season uh, very very strong. Um, so that's the plan. So for now, it's just uh, finish strong against DC, having a couple days off, and then reboot a little bit. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you.